What's up, everybody? Welcome back to My Twisted Life and TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of Power Book 3. This is uh, back in the day. Um, before we get started, if you have not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, so that way you can be notified each and every time a video was put up on this channel. Leave your comments in the comment section because I like to communicate with you about the show. Whether we agree or disagree, we're going to remain respectful in our comment sections to each other. Or I'll cuss you out. Okay, no. <laughs> um, so, two things first before I even get started. I've been at the doctor all morning. Um, I have some serious back pain going on. So if you see me quince up, that's why. And two, this is not a herpy. I got bit by a mosquito. Just want to let y'all know that. I just, there are some things we got to share, okay? So y'all know I normally don't watch the trailers. Um, but I happened to catch the one where Kane and Mama uh, was like, hey, let's go back to the park. You know what I'm saying? At that moment, I felt like the mama was going to give me all the life in this doggone show because she reminded me of my mama she reminded me of my mama and then i saw another one that jukebox was out here acting a fool now we already knew jukebox was crazy as hell so i was her fool i was like okay okay i'm ready for power book three y'all know i skipped over power book two all together because i could not stand Tariq and i refused to watch a show that was centered on him um I didn't even finish, finish out the, the last season of Power because of how they was playing that stupidity. But anywho, um, I'm feeling it so far. I'm feeling the theme song that 50 Cent created, the new one. I haven't learned it yet. You know, it ain't, it ain't a you know big rich town, but still, you know, it's, I'm getting my hustle on and I'm learning soon. Um, I kind of always like 50 Cent's music. And since he sampled, you know, Mary Jane Girls all night long, you know, that's my jam. I, I, that, that song, yeah, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel the theme song. It's hitting for me. Um, Y'all know I'm not a fan of Courtney Kemp, the executive producer of this show. Um, but she has unblocked me. <laughs> She has unblocked me. Now, depending on what stupidity comes out of her mouth during this season, that'll let her know if she's going to block me again because I'm, you know, I'm going to get in her ass. Well, we get Sha Sasha Penn. Um, he's brought back to the writing table. Sasha Penn is the one, one of the main writers in season one of the original Power. When the shit was good, okay? After season two, Power seems to start going down here. Sasha Penn wasn't right no more. So I'm interested to see how he's going to bring this story to life. Um, yeah, I think 50 knew what he was doing. He was like, I don't want to fuck up my character, so let's go and bring Sasha back on the table. Well, we start this off in 1985. Kanan is down on the ground in the park getting his butt whooped, right? Jukebox being held back by some dudes, and you know, they, you know, I guess he was trying to protect him, and they was like, nah, you ain't gonna get in on this, right? He not acting like a punk, you know, like he's scared of anything. No, he get up to try to throw them hands, but you know, he ain't got them paws against these older boys, right? So he tried to fight back and got back out. Got knocked back into next next week three times. <laughs> and they took his money. And they took his money. So after the third time, you know, and everybody started laughing at him and stuff, you know, he ran home, tail tucked between his legs, climbed underneath the covers, boohooing like a little you know, like a little kid would do if they got their ass beat. And, um, but you don't get no respect running away from a fight in the hood. You don't get no respect. So, he get home. His mom is sitting there with her boyfriend named High Post. They cutting up product, if y'all didn't notice that, right? But he notices that Kaden, you no, know, had some trouble. It's like, look like he got to a little scuffle at the park. I got some, some of my nose itching. Somebody talking about me real bad. Like he got to a little scuffle at the park, right? So, um, mama's like, okay, what's up? Her name is Rock, Raquel. They call her Rock for short. So, she goes in the room like, Kenan, why you crying? Why are you crying? You know, Ty and such and such, I think it's ASOS or something like that. You know, they, they took my money, you know what I'm saying? And she's like, well, you got her showing me your money. I told you not to do that. You got her talking about it then. Something, you know what I'm saying? You gave it up then. That's what you did, right? Where was Jukebox? You know, I noticed that through this whole episode, anytime that Kenan get into some shit, they always like, where's Jukebox? Why Jukebox wasn't around? You know what I'm saying? She's a couple years older than he is. I forgot how old he was at this time. 1985, six years. So he's nine right now. Okay. So, um, 
you know, so mom was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. She don't even say this is what we're going to do. She go over to his drawer, grab a sock out, start filling that bitch up with batteries. And I st at that moment, I was like, are they writing a the character based off my mama? Now, my mama wouldn't use batteries. She would use master locks or an ice pick on that ass. Like, for real. You're not going to fight. Or get your ass beat and come home and cry. No, you're going to go back and whoop some ass by any means necessary. Or you're going to have to deal with me. <laughs> Look here. I remember getting beat up once upon a time. <laughs> and I came home crying. And my cousin was like, what the fuck are you crying for? I just got jumped by these two girls. There's two girls. They live down the street from us to jump me. I just got jumped. She was like, what you do? I'm like, yeah. You you came home, you ran, you didn't fight back, you know what I'm saying? Then I was like, they was bigger than me. Da, da, da. I did that song this big. My cousin whooped my ass <laughs> for coming home <laughs> and losing that fight. But then as she whooped my ass, she did go down there and beat their ass too. She whooped them up, you know what I'm saying? But that's how it was back in the hood. I remember getting in trouble at school and on the way home, like the whole neighborhood would have been like, whooped your ass if you, you know, you didn't buckle up and fly right and part of flying right was protecting your own self in the hood don't be running away from no fight okay so anywho uh so they go down to the park she ain't even she just basically said hey gave him the socks said you better do what you gotta do either you're gonna deal with them fools or you're gonna deal with me and ain't no running away from me baby ain't no running away so you know reluctantly he take the little sock up there he go up to the little they still on the park they was cooler than fan man had a little cat daddy leather jackets on little pimp hats they was cooler than fan and uh he walked up to the one who was whooping his ass real bad Shwow! flung that bag of batteries across his face broke his damn nose he down on the ground bleeding and crying out and then the other dude is like hey hey Kanan, come on dog come on now so the man, like, ow, he hit him too. Now, the one who he hit first is the one he should have fucked up repeatedly. But he fucked up the friend. Like, he was going in on the friend. And people looked up screaming, damn, Kanan going in. Kanan doing this. You know, he liked to hear the sound of his name. Man, that's the first time his name was uttered in these streets. And he liked to hear the sound of this. Oh, that's how he was feeling, right? We move a little further on up to 1991. My class, you know what I'm saying? Class of 91. I'm just saying, you know. Kanan in high school now. And uh, apparently he a really smart kid. His counselor has already signed him up for this elite school. That, no, he got an interest exam test. In the school, you know, they done put 1.5 million or billion, I forgot which one it was, dollars into a high school. It's supposed to be the, the, the most um, expensive high school nationwide, what have you. And Rock is like, hell yeah, you going, you going, right? But he he like, no, I'm cool where I'm at, Ma. You know, he got his friends, he got his clout. You don't want to have to rebuild, you know, reputation up. I, I, I did like how they were introducing us to the characters. Um, but the one thing I did not like about it was 50 Cent's narrating. I didn't need his narration. I didn't need him talking to me like I'm a homie and he trying to explain to me and this after death. You know what I'm saying? I didn't need that, right? Um, but the little dude that is playing him, every once in a while, you can hear him capture the sound of 50 Cent's voice. Um, then they got the little jukebox girl, you know, she got pipes too, just like the L'Oreal. I know that ain't her real name, but that's what we're going to call her. L'Oreal. Yes, Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? She got some little pipes like that. Um, she in the choir room singing the Lord's Gospel. But Kana say, don't let the sweet voice fool you. Don't let it fool you, right? Because she, he ain't never met a nigga as hard as jukebox. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, during this particular episode, we didn't get to see the level of hardness from Jukebox. You know, we got to see her you know, throwing shots back at one of their friends. Um, we didn't get to see her throw no hands. We didn't get to see her check nobody. She actually seemed kind of into herself. What we did get to see was her sentimental side. And apparently the girl, the first girl who turned her out was, was some little white girl. Well, in high school is where he met Davina. The love of his life, you know. Um, as random TV reviews would say, Zora the weed explode. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I thought that they was gonna make the love of his life Sean's mama, you know, his son that he killed. That mama, remember, was the one that was holding him down while he was in jail all these years. Um, but yeah, that ain't who Davina is, that ain't who she is. Um, Davina got him shook, but Davina is with this dude named Buck 20. I was like 50 cents. Sasha. 
Courtney. What the fuck is up with these nicknames? Buck 50? Buck 20? Oh, he's a buck 20. He could even be a buck 50. Buck 20. Is that what he weighed? Okay. We go to his crew. Sean. The Puerto Rican um, Figaro is what they like to call him. I think Jukebox called him Famous. That was his nickname, Famous. Um, and that's only because, like, in third grade, he did some poem and won him some big competition, okay? He says the word nigga entirely too much for me. That's all I'm saying. I don't know why it's, why it's so loud um, with our Latino community. I just don't understand it. Have y'all don't even associate with y'all blackness. But y'all, nigga this, nigga that, nigga this, nigga that. Irks me at times. It irks me at times. But he said it entirely too much for me. Um, Rock, we get to meet her little brother, Lulu. Lulu is Rock's right-hand man, right? They head over to the hospital because one of their boys, Ready One, got hit. He got shot in the leg. He got nicked in the leg. It's painful. It burns. It stinks. He all right. You know what I'm saying? Big ass dude. But again, with the nicknames. Ain't nobody named Lil James. Ain't nobody named Junior, Peanut, Pookie. Everybody got these names like Castle Rock, Pancake Flip, Four Flat Tires. Everybody except for Uncle Marvin. Uncle Marvin. And I like this character. Well, I ain't sure. I don't know. Okay, the dude who playing this character, no matter what role he has been in, I cannot stand him. Even when he was on the TV show Ballers, it took to the last season for him to grow on me. Other than that, I couldn't stand his butt, right? I usually hate his characters. And I'm not too sure if I'm going to like his character on this one. You know, he wasn't even eating his sunflower seeds properly coming in the beginning. And that kind of dumped him in his damn mouth. That really upset my serves. You know what I'm saying? Well, they explain it. Because um, he working with, with Rock, too. Um, they got some problems. They got some problems moving weight on their territory right now. Um, some dude named Unique and some Harlem dudes setting up shop that's starting to, you know, get in on their territory. Now, the reason why Rock is in the game was from her old ex, High Post. Well, High Post got killed within the first year of his uh, of, of being introduced to him, so we didn't get to see High Post no more. They throw his names out a few more times. So we got High Post, Buck 20. Ready one, famous Lulu. Now I did know a dude named Unique. I, I used to date a dude named Unique, <laughs> but Unique is Buck Twenties plug. Okay, got him in on the game, and apparently, uh, Kanan is a little bit jealous that Buck Twenty is in on the game. Okay, so Rock and Lou. Once they heard the news of somebody moving in on the territory, they decided to go over to this club called Lanes. <sighs> they moving weight through Lanes. I I don't know why the whole club thing, it just took me back to ghosts. And I was like, come on, that's kind of overdone. <sighs> back in the 90s, y'all really moving weight through clubs like that. I don't think y'all were. I don't think y'all were. But anywho. They had a connect in the club named Hugo, who we never saw. But his sister was there. And her little barking ass, yapping dog. I cannot stand those little motherfucking dogs. What are those, Pomeranians? I hate those fucking dogs. Well, she said that she ain't fucking with Rock. And her old ghetto ass, dusty product. I was like, whoop, that damn bitch like that, right? Rock was like, the fuck you ain't? You gonna move this weight, honey. So, <laughs> she telling her brother, this bitch don't know me, you know. This bitch don't know me. And I was like, okay, this white girl already is a bad actor to me so she's working my nerves um she up here delivering her lines like you know, have you ever watched a porno that had acting in it and you know they try to create a storyline around the sex scenes she delivers her lines like she one of those porno actresses that, you know trying to act it's horrible it's horrible okay then we get to oh then we uh, rock while we're in there because Lulu told her to you know, settle back. She, he gonna handle a uh, white girl. We never got her name, ever. Okay, told her to settle back, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna handle her. So when she back back, you know, she leaned up on the bar and this is where we meet Symphony Basket. 
Even Rock had to say, that's one hell of a fucking name. You know what I'm saying? I'm one hell of a fucking guy. Symphony Basket. Come on now, 50 cents. Curtis Jackson. Sasha Penn. Courtney Kemp. Are y'all kidding me with these fucking names? Symphony Basket. It looks like he and Rock is going to have a little something, something going on. They seem to have a little interest in each other. I'm surprised that Rock would even bat eyes at a motherfucker that's a bartender. Unless she finna use him to help him move their weight. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, yeah, they look like they got an interest in each other. And later on, the family, which is consists of Rock, her little brother Lou, her big brother Marvin, um, Jukebox, who is the daughter of Marvin, and Canaan, they all at their favorite little restaurant. I think it was called Jerome's or Lamont's. One of two. Lamont's, I think it was. They there and Famous and his sister come in. The sister just moved here from out of town. You know, she's Puerto Rican too. I think she said she just came from Boston. And it, apparently she got eyes for Lulu. And he got eyes for her. Um, they all standing outside afterwards. And somebody drive by. I guess it was a test drive by because they didn't shoot at them. They shot at the sky. You know, riding by. Right? Everybody dive bomb behind cars. You know, Lulu pushed Jessica. She's like, oh my God, ain't nobody ever did that before me in my life. How many times you been shot at, sis? <laughs> Everybody just leave you standing there while you get shot at. Well, first of all, did nobody get shot at. They shot at the sky the entire time. And then all of a sudden you hear sirens. And you know damn well, especially back in the 90s, ain't no police rolling up in no hood that fast. Y'all know ain't nobody coming that quick. In, in New York? Come on, Jamaica, Queens? And the police ain't coming through no black neighborhood that fast. The people in the restaurant didn't bad, no mind. No mind. I mean, it's getting lit up outside. Or well, at least the sky is. Right? Well, apparently it was Unique's crew. Okay. Um... Because the dude turned around and looked back, you know, so you could see his face, right? And Kane knew who it was, right? So they knew it was Unique's crew. And Rock says she gonna handle that shit, you know. Um, well, Unique basically said his his crew was just trying to get her attention just because so they could set up this meeting. That's all he really wanted, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't pick up the phone and call her. You couldn't send somebody through the hood like, hey, I need to holler at you, okay? Now her having these mafia also type of meetings, you know, her crew on one side, his crew on one side, they out there and they chinchillas and stuff like that. Anywho, um, apparently his brother used to be the one running the streets and now he gone upstate for life. So unique is taking over. Okay. I wonder if his brother was just a special, you know what I'm saying? And he unique, you know, anywho, um, he want... Damn that. Where the fuck it come from? Okay. Anywho, he want um rock. Oh hell to the no no no. You finna die. I don't know where you come from. You finna die today, bitch. Okay. Let me come back through here. Come back through here. Anywho. Um he wants Brock to honor this agreement that he and High Post had established. Like I say, High Post is dead now, right? Um, now, Rock had just said, your brother wouldn't have tried to send me no message like that to get my attention. He said, well, I do things my own way. I don't do things like my brother. But yet you hear, well, Rock to do things like High Post used to do. Okay, basically there was some territory that's supposed to be in Switzerland. Nobody was supposed to be in on it, but apparently Rock's crew done moved in, which is why Unique's crew shot up Ready One. Okay, um, Rock tell him, look, I, I'm not high post. Whatever deal he had with you ain't my problem, right? Well, he apologized for Ready One getting shot, kind of, sort of. Like, you know what, I talked to my boys, you know, it's all squashed, done with. So, my boy done got shot up. And you think it's cool because you done gave him a talking to? Rock, what you doing, girl? Rock, what you doing? Okay, she telling him that she ain't finna bow down for nobody, you know what I'm saying? She don't get on her knees for nobody, especially not him. But basically, that's what you kind of did. You know, they made an agreement for him to... Um, have some territory. He gonna take 140th Street to 143 and she gonna get 144 on up. 
you know, she getting the extra block because the block is hot. They already done took it over anyway. Um, but yeah, one person though who we know not gonna be a problem no more is Hugo's sister. She up here banging out it. I thought it was Symphony Basket. Y'all tell me if that was Symphony Basket or not. She out here banging out this dude, and she keeps smelling something. Going to the kitchen. And her god dog on dog is being microwave. That little loud ass yapping Pomeranian dog. What if, if it's a Pomeranian? Me and microwave, y'all. In the microwave. I thought she was gonna go in the kitchen, it was gonna be a boiling pot, like you know, in fatal attraction. You know, I was like, but why you kill the damn dog? <laughs> he ain't did nothing to you. He ain't did nothing to nobody, right? Well, Canaan can't stay out of ground folks' business. It's like his mama told him before. You know, him and her, her brothers, they talking code. They talking five percent of language is what they like to call it. You know, in mathematics, that's what they talk in. And, you know, he was trying to tell her he know what the different words mean. They just trying to school us on mathematics, whatever. And, um, you know, his mama told him to stay out of ground folks' business. But, you know, he heard that, uh, what's the little boy name? Buck 50, Buck 20. He heard Buck 20 was over there chilling on 140. Last Kana knew that was his mama territory, but he ain't checked to see what the heck she did to handle everything. So he talking to Famous, Famous the one that told him, and uh, this little cat named D. Wiz, we saw D. Wiz earlier, that they was gonna go down there and uh, handle Buck 20 for his mama, down here disrespecting his mama territory, right? So, They go down there, that D Wiz like, you know what? I got some pieces at the crib. We can go down there and wet the place up, right? So that is him, Kanan, Famous, and two other dudes who didn't have no name. They go down there, D Wiz only got two guns. Famous is like, I'm not finna go out there and um unprotected. You know, I ain't got no hammer on me. I ain't finna do that. What I'm gonna do? Fight back bullets with my words? No. Uh-uh. So D Wiz and Kanan said, We're gonna go down there, we're gonna handle this. You know, they got to rock around there, and as soon as Buck seen him, he like, what the fuck is up, Kanan? What you doing over here? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he tried to post up. Kanan and D-Wiz came out blasting, right? <sighs> Buck got hit. Buck got shot. Buck got got. And um, neither one of them knew which one actually shot him, because they were just firing off bullets at will. The other two dudes that was with him, they got away. You don't let a motherfucker get away. You know what I'm saying? But okay, they let him get away. He came and dropped down to his side. Like, you know, I'm sorry, dog. I didn't mean to shoot you. Dropped down to his side. And um, if he was still alive at any point, everybody know that Kanan did it. You know what I'm saying? So, Symphony go out with a uh, rock. And... <sighs> I swear to he was the one that was just making sense. They go out to dinner. I guess we should get a little background on Symphony, whatever. You know, he getting his master's degree at uh, City College, what have you, in uh, Urban Planet. They're going to try to give us a whole lot of black history lessons throughout this show, I can see. Because they done been dropping so many, so many during this particular episode. Now, while she out, um, who was the jukebox was over with? This white girl, the white girl, you know what I'm saying? They had went to some choir competition together and they finished singing another one. She goes, her, her debut time ball or whatever, they gonna do a song together. And the girl is attracted to Juke, Juke attracted to her. They hold hands and she wanna kiss her. But Juke ain't, ain't banging out no women at this point. But like I said, this must've been the little girl that turned her out. Now, like I said before, anytime the Canaan into some shit, Jukebox supposed to be there to help protect him, right? But she around here trying to, you know, hanging with the white girl. Okay. Now, while she having, the, while Rock is having a dinner with Symphony, uh, Lulu come in and let her know, hey, can't. So she got to go out, right? They got on there talking. Now the whole family is there, including Jukebox. And of course, everybody mad. Like, Jukebox, where you been? Where you been? Where you been? And, um, that's when Rock find out that Kanan basically done started a war. Because we know Unique is going to try to come back at him. And she telling him that she already handled that shit. No, that was his territory. She already gave that territory to him. And, you no, know, Kanan's like, what the fuck you do that for? Marvin and Grant, what the fuck you giving up territory for? You know, she like, she went to Marvin like, hey, you need to shut the fuck up. You've already proven that you can't handle this, you know. You the one ain't running. You ain't got the mental capabilities to run shit around her. So I already know it's going to be a point of contention between her and her brother at some point because she keep calling this ass stupid. Right. Um, 
Well, Kanan was went to go take the interest exam like his mama told him to. And he purposely failed it, right? So he could stay home and be with his mama, you know. Um, and she tell his ass, you know, I should have let you stay with your grandmama. Because uh, that's where he was going to stay at anyway when he went to school. You could have stayed with your damn grandma, right? And that way you wouldn't be caught up in this mess. But he wanted to be put in on the game. Kane didn't want to be in the game so bad. And I think he just wanted to be in the game for Davina. I just think that, you know, they just didn't really center on that. It ain't about protecting his mama. I'm surprised, you know, that he knows so, as much as he do. But, you know, okay. So she tell him, like, you're going to move with your grandma. You're right. You should have been gone with her. So told him to take the trash out. And I'm like, now he just shot up somebody. And you finna have him go take out some trash. Okay. I knew he was finna get blasted at. I knew it. He go out there to take out the trash and of course somebody come and light the street up. She come out the house with her gun blasting, blasting, didn't hit nothing but the wall. Okay, now the police start. They all around. And this is where we get to meet Omar Epps. He's the black cop that think that black people ain't shit. That's pretty much what it is. They, the way that they describe him, he's the black cop, black cop, black cop, black cop. That's Omar Epps, right? Um, he got beef with Rock. He know Rock is doing dirty. He just pretty much can't put a finger on her. But he like, okay, you know, the rooster's coming home. You know, that's that's basically what he's saying as far as now that, that bullets is coming to your house, getting shot up at your crib. And uh, his his partner is a white girl. I forgot her name. Damn. She seems like she's going to be the thorn in their sides. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because she wants to send the shell cases and stuff back to get run traces on it. And Epps, I forgot his name. He tells her, you know what, well, that's pointless because the gun that's attached to those bullets is probably already at the bottom of the river. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but my thing is, if she picks up those casings, she gonna realize that they're from two different guns. The way that Rock is trying to make it seem like whoever did this drive-by just shot at the wrong house. It was just a mistake. You know what I'm saying? They shot up the wrong house, shot up the wrong person. Um, but when they see that there's two different shell cases, they would know that you shot back. And especially from the tra trajectory of the bullets. They're going to know you shot back. But anywho, um, she go talk to you unique again. We're going to have a conversation. You just tried to kill my son. Now we're going to talk. I guess she's supposed to be rational. You know, everybody else want to go pop off, little handle some shit. She wants to be rational. She goes to talk to him and she gives him a wad of cash for, for Buck 20's family. Um, and he wants her to bow down. He's like, I don't give a fuck about this money. You know what I'm saying? You took out one of my people, and now you think you're going to try to pay me off? You shot ready one, dog. Did y'all forget about that? You started this shit. You know what I'm saying? Anywho, he got a bounty on Kanan and all his friends. Um, but he tell her, I'll take the bounty off of Kanan's head, which means he's still going to be gunning for the rest of them, right? However, though, he said he can't control the people that Buck may have on his side. The Buck 20, he got family. You know, he know got people on the south side. You know? And he, he said, you know, you slipping, Ma. This why I don't fuck with broads. Because broads are too attached to their family. You know, she said, you got a kid, too. And he's like, you know, I don't give a fuck about my son, Jerome. You know, that's basically what he told him. He ain't come from my loins. I mean, I didn't birth him. I ain't came around for nine months. But you, you got a whole different type of connection with your son. This will make y'all broads weak. You know, this will make y'all broads blink. And she telling him, look her. I ain't blinking, nigga. I ain't blinking at all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't blinking at all. So he walk off, and um, I, I, I guess that's the end of it, you know, between them. But later on, she realized, you know, she really do need to toughen Kanan up a little bit more, what have you. Um, so she takes him out for a ride, wakes him up in the middle of the night, go for a long ride. He think he finna go to Grandma's house, and they go out to the river. You know, she talked to him about the moons and the stars and the shit like that. You know, same thing that Ice Cube and them did in uh, Boys in the Hood. You know, talking about the moons and the stars and shit like that. And uh, basically tell him, you know, they, they're hunters. They're Orions. They're the hunters. Like, just like the Orion the hunter. And we don't let people hunt us. We hunt people, right? So she gives him a gun and tells him to shoot out there, right? Hey, he shoots out. It's symbolic of him putting that bullet out into the world. Once he put it out there, he can't never bring it back. It's going to be chasing, going around the world. And he's going to have to, all the drama that comes with it, he's going to have to deal with that, right? That's basically what that whole thing meant. But then she pulls out her gun too And they shoot together And they just start, start popping off rounds Into the river They wasn't target practicing or anything She told him to hold the gun, how to hold it At some point he 
had his finger. I don't know. It was weird, but it was weird how he was holding it. Um, but she kind of told him how to hold it, like a cop would hold a gun. Street thugs don't hold their guns like that for real. You know, they ain't got time to post up and dip down and do all that. But that's how she told him. You know, he still got his head tilted, which it, that throws me off when people tilt their head to see straight. But okay, anyhow, um, they just shooting off into the water, wasting bullets. Like I say, you ain't even hitting a target or aiming for a target. But you can see the jubilation come over Caitlyn's face. Like, oh yeah, I like the feel of this. I like the. It is, you know, that's basically how it was. And that's the end of the episode, y'all. Let me tell y'all, um, I was excited for this in the beginning. Um, I, I like I said, initially I liked the way that they were introducing the characters, but then once they started the storyline, at some point it came became again about introducing more characters, and it kind of lost its build for me. Um it wasn't a horrible episode. It wasn't a great episode. It was just right there in the middle. Um, like I say, it initially got me excited to want to see it and look for more. Um, but like again, this is the back in the day. We already knew how his story ended, as Kaden said. Um, now we know how his story began. So from episode two, now we're gonna be in the thick of the things. You know what all happened in between. And that's where we at, y'all. So, y'all let me know what y'all thought about Power Book 3, Raising Canaan, back in the day. Leave it in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video, which will be Real Housewives of Potomac, Episode 2. Peace.